The Lake District is my favourite place on the planet. I don't get there as often as I would like, but in October 2021 I spent a few days exploring some of what Alfred Wainwright describes as the Western Fells. This walk is along the southern ridge above Buttermere and takes in Red Pike, High Style, High Crag and Haystacks. Please don't rely on my map here, this is just to illustrate the route. It's always important to have the right equipment before setting off fell walking. My starting point was the car park that is accessed to the right side of the Fish Hotel, otherwise known as Buttermere Court. The car park is pain display and there are also toilets which are chargeable. I followed the track on the other side of the hotel which leads to the northern shore of Buttermere. The view that greets you as you're near the water is gorgeous. The majestic Fleetwith Pike stands proud at the southern end of the lake. The path leads on to Sowmilk Gill and to the left there are two paths the route I took leads steeply uphill through the woods. The path here is well made and it's bracing, but a pleasant uphill climb. As you get to the edge of the fir forest, you'll see a fence and a gate, and as you come through, the path turns right uphill. From here, the views just get better and better. And after a short breather, we're headed on upwards. Further up the hillside, you first hear that lovely sound and then Sawmilk Gill comes into view again. Owing to the wet weather, there are some impressive cascades at this time of year. Where the ground levels out near Bleabury Tarn, the way becomes a little indistinct and in wetter weather this section could be quite tricky to negotiate, which of course is not uncommon in the lakes. So here it is, Bleabury Tarn. On the top, still some mist, but it seems to be lifting. And there's the path going up to the summit. The path above Bleabury that leads up to the ridge is exceptionally good and you can see where Red Pike gets its name as the earth at this level has a very reddish hue. And here's the view from the ridge. You can see Lowe's Water and Current Water back there. I might be called Dodd, that one down there. And uh, there's Buttermere. Just see Fleet with Pike peeking out, and that's Bleabury Town. It's eerily quiet up here. I think I saw some people follow me up, but I'm not sure whether they're on the way up or not. If I just turn my camera around and see the way I've come up, which is the, the route from from Buttermere Village. It really is quite steep and if you if you're faint-hearted you probably wouldn't like it uh, and going down I think it would be worse to be honest um, but you've got to be quite sure-footed. The north side is similar I know I went down there many years ago quite quite slippery unless I've done something with the path which I doubt it at, at this level. I'm going round over there and hopefully the weather will change a bit. Um, I think that one up that we showed, saw there was high style and I may come down Fleetwith Pike but I'm not sure of the way down so we'll, we'll, we'll decide about that when we get near it. See you later. At the top of Red Pike there are expansive views in clear weather uh, as it is the highest peak on this ridge. Looking north that's Lowe's Water and Millbrake and then Crummock Water. 
Uh, the mist is closing in, but that's Grassmoor. And this is the summit of Red Pike. Uh, just as I turned my camera off, the mist lifted over to the west and revealed Ennerdale. So this is just coming down off Red Pike and in the distance, I think that's High Style or that ridge certainly. And then over there is the lovely Buttermere. And you can even see what I think is a bit of down water in the distance. So this is the uh, the ridge up to Chapel Crags, up to High Style, and it's a lovely, lovely view down into the Buttermere Valley and over to the fells to the north. A bit cold up here now. Put my gloves on. As you look back at Red Pike, the path up from the tarn is very clear, and the steep final climb to the summit that I mentioned earlier is easy to see. The craggy projection here is part of Chapel Crags. There's a nice easy path going over to High Style and of course there's the inevitable climb up to the summit. So, a bit out of breath. Although it's not a bad climb up to the top of High Style, this is the summit. Over there in the mist, I could be the back of Great Gable over there I think and that big one I think is Pillar. You can see Annadale water down there. And then again the end of Don't Water, I think. Yes, because above it to the left, that, that ridge coming up to the left of the lake is Causey Pike, I think. The one with the lovely novels. And then looking down there again is Crummet Water and Melbrake. If you were coming down off High Style in the mist, you might struggle to find the path at first, but then a little further down there are some cairns to reassure you. I've been so blessed with the weather today. The forecast wasn't good, which may, may be why I haven't met a soul up here yet, and I'm loving it. Well, the mist seems to have cleared again, and the next peak along this awesome ridge is High Style that's up ahead. Uh, and that, of course, is the other side of the Ennerdale Valley with Pillar to the right and what must be Great Gable and Kirk Fell uh, holding on to all that mist. So, uh, top end of Buttermere, uh, heading up to High Crag, and as you can see, it's just a, it's, it's quite easy, and uh, again, the views are just superb. And if we go over the top, <coughs> this is Scarfells and Pillar. So up to the left is what I think is High Crag. And over to the right, I'm getting cracking views of the Scarfells, and you see that lovely lump right in the middle. Great Gable, which I've never been up. Stunning. 
as you might have gathered, one of the reasons why my dialogue is not live a lot of the time is because the wind up here kept cutting across my microphone. We're now at the summit of Kai Crag, looking down towards Haystacks. And I look over to Fleetwith Pike and begin to recognise just how scary the descent appears. And of course then decide that uh, that just isn't happening. So, uh, coming down onto seat and all of a sudden Haystacks is looking quite imposing uh, quite a climb back up actually uh, but I think we'll do that and that'll probably be my last peak today so that's looking back up to seat um, and if you look just to the left of the scree that zigzag path is actually a properly made path, the one with stones dropped by helicopters. And uh, so it's only near the top that it gets really a bit of a scramble, but not too bad. So looking up to where we're on our way to, so that little summit there is the top of seat, and then in, to the left is haystacks. Coming round the top of seat, I'm deciding whether to cut the route short and head down to the valley and miss out the haystacks. Um, as you'll notice from the map, there are several paths down off this ridge, which is good to know uh, if the weather turns for the worse. I'm making my way down to the Col and Scarth Gap Pass, which is one of the ways off the ridge. Uh, not a difficult path down to here. The way up Haystacks is a mixture of some of the stone paths that we have become so accustomed to. And there's also some scrambling in places. Uh, from this perspective, it, it couldn't be less like a haystack. It's so rocky. So this is the view from uh, somewhere at Haystacks, uh, probably a bit more than halfway. Bit of a scramble, but uh, we're good. That's uh, High Crag, which is high. And um, there's Buttermere and Crumut Walker. Stonking views. And that's the way to the top. Uh, as you descend, the paths are a bit patchy in places, uh, but again, they become clear soon enough. Uh, and there are two small tarns, which this is the second, uh, and it's called Innominate Tarn, as in the tarn without a name. And the path goes to the left of this. Quite a different sort of landscape as you come down from Haystacks. Uh, you can see, if you look in the distance there, that grey there, that's, that must be the Honester Slate mine. Um, and all of a sudden the landscape changes, it's got a very different feel to it. You can hear the waterfalls in the distance. Innominate Town is just behind me. So this is coming down from haystack still uh, pretty impressive rock faces and there's a uh, fleet with pike and this is the way down I think there's another tarn down here because like black 
something to on and you have to get to that and then you take a left to head down back to Buttermere. Okay, so uh, just below me, I'm standing almost in the middle of it, is Black Beck, Tar uh, Black Beck which comes from Black Beck Tarn, just behind me and what a wonderful view of the two lakes. Superb. At this point I follow the path that you can see that goes to the left of the stream. Slightly back up the path is a junction that gives you the option to take the route a little further up the back and takes you down the right hand side. I think the latter is possibly a broader more well used path than the one that I took. In this shot further down the path you can see this other route down the other side of the gorge and the two paths do meet up further down the valley. You can make out the two tracks over to the far right and left of the beck. I didn't take many shots of the final leg of the journey as I was nearly out of battery on my phone. Back down at ground level, you can really appreciate the beauty and the grandeur of this ridge. Um, just so worth the effort. It, it's, it's a wonderful time of year to uh, visit the lakes in autumn. Uh, for me, it's the best time of year. It's probably worth mentioning the time scale of this walk. I did a lot of stopping and filming and taking in the views, but I left the car park at 8.40 a.m. and got back at 6 p.m. Uh, if anything, I did underestimate the time it took to walk down and along the valley, which is quite a trek. Um, oh, well worth it, of course. But for me, at least, this was a, a substantial walk. 